James here and join in on the learning with not one, two, three, but four amazing powerhouses in digital fundraising as they explore all things giving day secrets. Chaz Raisley's US Growth Lead, guys, this amazing discussion. So sit back and enjoy as you are sure to get so much out of this webinar. Um, welcome, welcome everybody to Giving Day Secret Ingredients. We're very excited to be here. I'm Chaz uh, from Raisley. Um, and as you are popping in, can you just go ahead and introduce yourself with a name and organization in the chat box? Let's make sure we are, see who's here, say hello. Um, we're excited that you are a part of this webinar. Mandy, fantastic, a, a public media friend we know and love. All right. So as folks come in, go ahead and just say hello. Uh, this is also where we'll ask questions and have more of a conversation we hope today. Um, but let's go ahead and just dive in. Uh, as I said, that's me. <laughs> I'm the U.S. growth lead at Raisley. Um, really responsible for all things uh, Raisley in the U.S., North America. Um, go ahead and, and transition a little bit to the real main event here and our speakers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask each to do a, just a quick introduction and say hello, if you wouldn't be so kind. Um, but Kathleen from Giving Tuesday, would you mind kicking things off? Sure thing. Uh, I'm Kat, everyone. It's nice to be here. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm the director of digital strategy at Giving Tuesday. Uh, you might have heard of Giving Tuesday. We're the biggest philanthropic social movement of all time. And my role on the team is to study how to use digital tools to move people to action. And then I go share that information with social change makers all around the world so that they can open minds and wallets and create bigger impact for their causes. Um, I'm also a professor at New York University's uh, Center for Global Affairs, where I just helped launch a brand new virtual certificate in digital fundraising. Fantastic. Thanks, Kat. Danny, Deanna from KPCC Public Radio. Hey there. I'm Danny Sway. I'm a senior fundraising manager at KPCC, which is a flagship NPR station in Southern California based out of Pasadena. We also have LAS.com, which is our digital news. Uh, website and uh, yeah, excited to be here. Hello, I'm Deanna alongside Danny. I work at KPCC uh, managing the membership program as well as on air fundraising for our NPR station. Good morning or afternoon. I'm Amy Boroff. Um, I serve on a few nonprofit boards and I am a development strategist with Amplify. And so I get to use my knowledge and expertise to work with nonprofit organizations and independent schools to strengthen and strategize on their communications to reach goals. Fantastic. And I'm among great companies, so thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for being here, Amy, Deanna, Danny, and Kat. We're very excited to uh, have you today and really dig into the topic. I think it's on everybody's mind. And as you all know, it's never too early to start thinking about Giving Tuesday, but also Giving Days. Um, as they become more and more important in our fundraising toolkit. So let's go ahead. I want to do a quick introduction, if I may, to uh, what we have been planned for you today. Um, overall, I'm going to do a little bit of a song and dance from Raisley. So an introduction, if you're not familiar, familiar with Raisley, I want to share a little bit with you. Also give you a sneak peek to a new Giving Day theme. Um, we want to spend most of our time on discussions with our guest speakers. That's why you're here. That's what we want to do is really dig into some of the practices um, emerging today, as well as dig in and review a little bit of the history, how we got to where we are. Um, at the end, or at least the second half-ish, <laughs> the last 15, 20 minutes, we want to turn it over to some questions. Please feel free to enter or uh, submit your questions in the chat box, um, and we'll go ahead and answer them as best we can, whether it's any technical uh, questions from the start or anything. Uh, that you may need clarifying or following up with when we have the opportunity to dig a little bit deeper. Um, as far as Raisley, uh, just to share with you, if you're not familiar with Raisley, Raisley, we are a um, for-purpose uh, fundraising platform for ambitious organizations. We're global, uh, founded in Australia, but we work with organizations all across the world. 
We're also B Corp. So uh, what that means to us is that purpose is baked into our constitution. We're employee-owned company, uh, really serving uh, nonprofits in the social sector, uh, doing, doing good work to really make the planet a better place. Uh, to date, we've raised uh, through our generous partners, our, our customers and overall providers, uh, about $300 million. And that's from about 1,500 charities across the world. So thank you to all of our partners across the world who have really been successful in uh, making an impact locally. As far as what we do and how we do it, um, I want to highlight just a couple of things because I think what's unique in the U.S. market, what I find unique, is that much of Raisley is bringing forth templates. I mean, it's a starting point. It's an, uh, a place in which you can create and build from an existing design. So we offer six different templates. Uh, one not shown here is just a general donation form, but certainly there is peer-to-peer, -peer, there's activity-based peer-to-peer, there's um, general appeals. Uh, think about these being you know, day or monthly appeals, end-of-the-year appeals, community hubs, um, and then of course, uh, in-memory themes. And so all of this can be built on Raisley, um, empowered uh, to support your organization. What we're really excited about um, and why we're here today, at least one aspect of it is share uh, some thinking around the strategy in Giving Tuesday. But as we lead uh, or get closer to the year end, which we're all thinking about Giving Tuesday as much as Giving Days, we wanna share a little bit of a sneak peek of our theme that we're gonna release in a couple weeks. This is a Giving Day theme. Um, as you can see, there's just highlighting some better practices with the donation above the fold, uh, some imagery blocks to allow for you to really showcase your organization's work and impact. Um, thermometer, of course, we all know the value of a thermometer. Um, we are, I am, I should say, a sucker for seeing that growth and that contributions, the contributions being made by your donors, hence some sort of donor validation and donor scrolls here. Um, also on the theme is allowing for little gamification. We all know this from our peer-to-peer -peer side of the house. And so thinking about how you're encouraging your audiences to really, well, get involved and get their communities involved, their networks involved. Um, much of that is baked into the template itself. And then also knowing that giving days are very big opportunities for uh, matched giving partners. So certainly leveraging some of that tactical piece in which you can raise a certain amount on a certain day uh, that can be matched or uh, championed by a sponsor or partner for your organization. Um, certainly, all that is a, just a piece of the puzzle and why we're all here today is to listen and engage with our speakers. So to start things off, I just wanna go a little bit into, uh, start with you, Kat, and kind of Giving Tuesday. And sure. at the start, you know, we don't need a history run. I think we're all pretty familiar with the history of Giving Tuesday. Um, but I want to see if you can share more about why they're growing in popularity. More, more recently, maybe how they've evolved and why they're as big as they are today, as opposed to maybe 10 years ago. And do, and they are growing. Um, your pages look phenomenal, by the way. I had got a chance to see them oh, before. Good. This is my first time seeing them. They look really great. I'm excited well, to see them. You practice. and everybody else. <laughs> I know. I love it. I'm glad to, glad to get the first glimpse. Um, let me do my usual little myth bust routine that I typically <laughs> do about Giving Tuesday. So when my colleagues came up with the idea of Giving Tuesday, uh, they didn't say, hey, let's create the biggest Guinness World Record breaking crowdfunding day of all time. It is consistently every single year, but that's not the point. Uh, last year, we did $2.7 billion in 24 hours in the United States alone. It's big. But the reason that Giving Tuesday exists is to build the world that we all imagine to be possible. The actual mission of Giving Tuesday is to create a world that's based on radical generosity. Uh, we view that as the notion that someone else's suffering should be as intolerable to us as our own suffering. Uh, and we believe that if we create a society that's more inclined toward generosity first and like centers generosity in their daily lives, what does that do to other pro-social behaviors? And our data, I, I could talk for days about our data comments. It's a not outside of the scope of us today, but our data comments uh, work and research shows that consistently that it is. And what you end up getting is 
a society that's more inclined to vote, a society that's more inclined to become active members of their communities and increasing the value and participation in civil society. There's still so much work to do, of course, and I'd argue that this work has never been more important than it is right now. Um, to your question, how Giving Days have evolved, why we think they're growing in popularity. I mean, they've certainly become more sophisticated since the first Giving Day that I ran way back in the early days of 2014. We didn't have Giving Day platforms back then. It was like simple HTML landing pages and we just linked off to uh, each individual nonprofit's landing page. So the technology certainly has become uh, light years away from what it was a decade ago, uh, which is great. Uh, everything from providing a better donor experience, streamlining that experience and that journey for donors to learning about behavior and measuring results of the day, all of those things. Um, as far as why they're growing in popularity, I think it's nonprofits recognizing their value in in getting new donors for them. So I came today with one slide. I usually come with like 47 slides, but I told, <laughs> I promised you I'd just bring one. So I'm going to have you put this one up for me if you don't mind. Okay. Um, what we're going to look at is from our data commons work from the year 2020. This is the percentage of donors across the entirety of the year 2020, not just Giving Tuesday, the, the whole year from every donation platform in the United States. That's part of our data commons work. Uh, it's the biggest data collection uh, around philanthropic uh, data and research of all time. It's immense. It's awesome. The amount of data that we get is fantastic. And it's uh, this is one of the things that we've been able to find. This is the percentage of new donors across the entirety of the year 2020. And you can see these very clear bumps on Giving Tuesday Now, which was our emergency giving day that we did in on May 5th, 2020 and on Giving Tuesday. Uh, what does this tell us? That people are absolutely yearning for collective giving moments that use a sense of urgency and a way that they can feel that they're part of creating systemic change together. So Giving Days are an incredible opportunity to use this uh, to our advantage as nonprofits. Uh, it's a way to reach new donors particularly these so-called small donors. I don't like that phrase. I don't believe that any gift is small, right? Uh, but, but grassroots givers who can come from all parts of your community and come together during one moment who you can use as an army for your cause uh, as long as you foster those relationships, right? So giving days are the best. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you Kat, thank you. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Kat. And I love the term radical generosity um, because that just encapsulates Giving Day. It's built up, it's a crescendo. So it's phenomenal. Yeah. So I'm curious that Danny and De Dana um, from uh, Southern California and NPR station, um, KPCC, how, um, how did that play into this radical generosity into the launch of California Public Radio Day in 2019? which just to your luck, it was six months prior to the start of the pandemic. Um, in what ways that impact uh, your given day in most recent years? There's a few questions in there, but as far as I'll start with, um, how has the, you know, why did you decide to go with a given day um, in 2019? Yeah, um, well, we, for one, we were inspired by Giving Tuesday. So big props there for uh, establishing a precedent where we can have a single day of fundraising. It came from a need uh, to diversify our revenue sources. You know, we have pledge drives quarterly and it really, you know, made sense that there's all this time in between, you know, why aren't we fundraising there? We wanted to have an opportunity to motivate um, and engage our activated audiences um, who are ready to give. And then uh, it really kind of struck a chord in 2020 um, when we did ours in August 2020, where um, pandemic fundraising became very important for nonprofits as funding started, you know, drying up for a lot of uh, public radio newsrooms. So we, we put the word out to stations all across the state of California, and everyone seemed really receptive to having an additional day of fundraising. So it, it really was a natural fit. I think that Giving Tuesday really was the primer for it. It kind of created a language that people understood, uh, and we kind of followed a similar methodology where we provided every asset that stations would need to make it 
most easy for them to execute. So we're talking uh, email copy, uh, on air, um, talking points, pre recorded spots. Uh, and then there's a lot of fun room for collaboration as well with um, all the stations to, you know, tag each other socially and have that kind of sense of community. And it was a time of kind of division in the country. So coming together on any topic, I think, is healthy and helpful and healing, which is great. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of positivity around that. Fantastic. I love it. So it's a movement kind of within. I mean, really kind of starting off and kicking things off. Deanna, from your experience, I mean, how has in the last two years, uh, you know, relatively new, but I think like a uh, pandemic has aged us all in different ways. How has the pandemic informed or aided or supported the kind of the growth of California given day? Yeah, I think um, the pandemic really, you know, speared us forward in, in launching a, a giving day. So if anyone out there is thinking about starting their own giving day, and if they can't find one of the hundreds that already exist, <laughs> um, to rally around, I'd say go for it. Um, you know, California has a lot of public radio stations in it. So that just seemed like a natural fit for us to rally everybody together around a common cause and uh, be able to work together. Um, and, and something Danny has mentioned before, you know, instead of being making it a competition between the stations, um, we'd really turned it into, you know, a collaboration and a way for everybody to work together towards um you know, a common goal of raising the awareness of the importance of public media. Um, but, you know, everyone's still fundraising independently. You, you know, you can set your own goals, you can um, come up with your own uh, strategies or sponsors or whatever. But the, the fact that, you know, if you think about it, you know, there's 30 stations across the state who have the same exact message on air on the same exact day. It's really this unifying message that um, I think during the pandemic, when it's been tough to get together and um, have, you know, face-to-face interaction, just having that voice on the radio for public media that everyone is in this together and everyone is sharing this common message is, has really, you know, kind of complemented that feeling during the pandemic. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Just if I may add my public radio or public television roots, but I could certainly see some stations saying, well, you know, it's so close to year end. We don't want to happen so close to year end because, you know, that's our day took a lot of time to get stationed turned around to giving tuesday this is in august why so close yeah it's it's one of our toughest questions finding a day that works for so many different stations um we originally had planned it to launch i believe in april Mm -hmm. of 2020 but this little thing called the pandemic happened so we paused on that and then we rescheduled to a time that made sense which was august and we've kept August ever since. But I think in an ideal world, if I could pick any date out of the year, I would probably go back to, um, you know, just before summer, like late spring, just because it seems like stations could either roll it into their active pledge drives and it becomes a talking point for their pledge drives or it's far enough from a pledge drive where uh, there's a a nice gap there. And yeah. And especially as we grow, we want to incorporate more college stations and college stations really aren't, they're just coming back in uh, August, end of August. So having more people on campus, more ears to listen to, I think is better. So spring um, or even kind of early spring, you know, could, could work as well after we do our big push for calendar year. And, and it's pretty great. And um, just to see all the different stations, if you go to the website, if you go to the next slide, you can see the uh, stations all kind of having, oh, I guess we don't have our slide in there. It is. Um, using the same graphic um, that we send out and the same talking points, it just becomes this really nice um, kind of collaborative feeling that uh, you see. It's actually, it's a lot more bespoke than it seems. It looks very polished, but it's literally just Deanna um, creating the graphics sizes for different stations that need it, that don't have their own graphics team. Because some of these stations are, are you know, a membership team of sure. one. So, you know, as much as we can provide as possible, I think is is great to, to get this off the ground. I think that's kind of one of the big talking points when we're pitching this to stations to participate. It's like, don't worry, we got you on all the details. All you have to do <laughs> is plug, you know, this email copy in, change the station to your station and have a signature and we'll make it easy for you. So I think, you know, providing as much as you can, if you're looking to start your own uh, region or statewide uh, fundraising day, making it easy for participants is definitely the best yeah. thing you can do for success. 
Yeah, toolkits. I mean, toolkits kind of uh, uh, preach to the choir. Amy, I'm kind of curious from your end as far as how you are advising clients, working with nonprofits to really find that right time of the year, time of, you know, we're all busy and organizations have many things going on, but how are you kind of working with your clients to really find that right time, right ask, and it's sort of building it into their annual plan and annual, annual strategy. Yeah, no, I think, and, and Danny brings up such a great point that we, we have so many tools that we have that are accessible to us, right? We have, um, if you want to look at KPCC, I'm sure, you know, like you said, you can, you know, relay that and, and hand over that information and those tools so that it's just a turnkey, you know, tweet for someone to send or just an awareness thing and giving Tuesday, I mean, the resources on there. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think the yeah. most important thing is that we have to do what works individually for each organization. Um, but what we really need to do is make sure that it is part of your communication plan, whether it is uh, NPR's day um, in, in August or if it's Giving Tuesday um, or if you're celebrating, I think today is Non-Binary Awareness Day. So, you know, it, whatever your day is, you know, it has to be built into your communication plan, similar to what a gala would be, what an alumni day would be. Um, and when we're thinking about it, you know, just and like any other campaign, we want to make sure that you have all the components. Are we prepared? Are you prepared, your organization, in providing these tools? So if your goal is fundraising, you know, first, that's the first step, decide what your goal is, um, whether it's fundraising, volunteer recruitment, board recruitment, awareness. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the nice thing about all, the, all these days is when you can do it collaboratively. So if, like, you know, similar to KPCC, even though they have their day of giving, they're still, you know, participating in Giving Tuesday. Because as Kat said, we know that as a, um, as a community together, we, we are strengthened in numbers and more awareness and everyone gets excited about it. So in your plan, in your marketing, in your communication plan at the beginning of the year, when you sit down, just check off all your boxes, make sure that you have your pre-communications that are going out and that they're on your calendar. Making sure like little things um, that make it look really professional I think a lot of you know, nonprofits tend to get nervous. I mean, you know, they're, they're, are them, am I in or am I not in? But making sure you, know, you have the, a header on your donation page that matches the graphic that's on your email that goes out. Um, but all you know, collectively, um, I think what Kat said and looking at the graph that Kat shows, my goodness, look at those numbers and what that is telling us. So just looking at this, if anybody's going to walk away with one thing, aside from preparing for Giving, giving Tuesday or your Giving Day, prepare for your follow-up. I mean, these are all new donors. And stop looking at just your top tier 500 plus thousand dollar plus donors. What can you do to capture, to engage? What is your welcome packet going to look like? It's not going to look like the same welcome packet that you sent to someone that's a major donor, but you want this person that makes this $10, $20 whatever their donation is and whatever their interest is, you want their fo your follow-up to be meaningful to them, right? So we wanna, this is such a great opportunity for acquisition, which we know is on the rise. Acquisition is rising, claps and applause to everyone out there, but use this day as a day that works for your organization. If you don't have a giving day, if um, there's not one out there that matches, then, then create your own and just make your own goals for it. And honestly, my third piece of advice on this, and, and then I'll stop talking, but is, to check out the resources that are out there because there's so many of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I just straight tee up. I just shared and Georgie uh, popped in a little description in the chat box for nonprofit tech, um, uh, tech for good. Basically a list of all of the giving days that are out there today. I mean, just think we're just started with one giving Tuesday, not just one little, but seven, eight years ago. And now we have a given Tuesday for everything under the sun which is fantastic. As and then make should. it. Yes, as, as we, we should. should. And Absolutely. the nice little thing about it is if you're using hashtags, you can follow the conversation and join the conversation with someone that might be, you know, observing the same day as you across the world, right. um, but might not have known about you. So we're seeing so, more and more cause-based coalitions come together on Given Tuesday, um, which is it's amazing. And we think the reason for that is oftentimes donors will feel really passionate about a certain cause, but not necessarily know of an organization uh, near them or that they can get involved with. So these cause coalitions are really amazing. There's Giving Tuesday uh, LGBTQ, so they have a landing page uh, that 
it's profiles of LGBTQ serving organizations from all over the nation. And you can type in your zip code, it will pull up the one that's closest to you. And there you go, you are now connected with your local organization times every cause area that you could imagine. So as the, the number of causes have grown and the number of you know, days certainly has increased, how have the tools or how have the practices evolved since that, you know, first day, Kat, or that first year where it's like, you know, three hours before the start of the day, email, email, email. How has it grown since then to really build out a strategy? Um, I think it's exactly that. I think if the folks have figured out that they do need to create a strategy. You can't think about your Giving Tuesday campaign or whatever giving day three days before you're going to fail. Yeah. Um, this is about, this is very much about understanding your current network, uh, mapping out who your target audiences are going to be figuring out what your goal is for the giving day. Uh, we don't recommend having more than one goal, frankly, maybe two goals. So you should have, maybe you have a monetary goal, that's fine, but maybe you have a different goal. Maybe you have a goal to obtain new donors. Maybe you have a goal to increase the number of monthly donors that are coming into your organization. Maybe you have a goal that has absolutely nothing to do with fundraising and more power to you. That's a great strategy. But name your goal out loud to your internal staff uh, and external, actually. Uh, figure out who is in your community that you can mobilize toward that goal and then empower those people with the tools that they can best do uh, to help you achieve your goal. So peer-to-peer -peer is probably one of your best tools in your mm. toolbox. It is absolutely the best tool in your toolbox. I, that's, that's my hill. Um, <laughs> People give to people and not to organizations, right? That social proof that your organization is getting by somebody giving to you and then announcing that on their Facebook page is worth more to you than gold, honestly. And what you want to do is figure out who it is that you're best super fans of your organization and ask them not three days before Giving Tuesday, but three months before Giving Tuesday, hey, would you consider running a fundraiser for us on our behalf? on Giving Tuesday or whichever giving day it is that you're working toward. Um, and then you want to make it as easy as pie for them to participate. You want to make it fun, first of all. So anything physical, anything like yoga, running are great activities to build challenges around. Uh, there was a, on Giving Tuesday, there was a UK organization that did this really cool peer-to-peer -peer challenge to support homeless folks. It was you donate like five pounds or something like that and sleep somewhere other than your bed and then challenge three friends to go do the same. Uh, and it just created this ripple effect, really exciting, a lot of energy around it. So come up with something creative and then make it really easy for them to participate. So this yeah. means uh, we've been talking about this a lot, create copy pasteable social media messages for them, use Canva templates for them, uh, Give them really clear instructions and lots of cheering on along the way, uh, reminders to post, all of those things. Kat, I feel like you're really uh, speaking our love language from the standpoint of Always. Raisley and Australia, as I've learned, I mean, kind of the birthplace, activity-based peer-to-peer in many ways. And so, so much of that is occurring well before the pandemic that I've seen on the Australian side of the house, so at least these. Um, and it's kind of, it's starting to bubble up a little bit and, and pandemics kind of push that in, in a good way. Um, Danny and um, Deanna, I mean, as far as from peer to peer, I know that's not the sweet spot for the public media world, but as far as how have you, or do you incorporate peer to peer within Giving Day or just general campaigns? Um, because that's a little bit harder, uh, a little harder inroads, I think, from a standpoint of public media. Um, is it a part of your campaign? Do stations, are stations asking for it? Um, what has been the feedback there and how have you responded? Yeah, it certainly, um, I think, is the next step. You know, how do we raise the bar even more uh, in fundraising? And I've been thinking a lot about peer-to-peer -peer as kind of uh, a next way to amplify our fundraising efforts in ways that we haven't. Uh, it's not something that we've done beyond, you know, the ones built into, like, the Facebook platform with mixed success. but. Um, I think that peer-to-peer -peer is very strong. It builds this kind of excitement. And then finally, it's someone else talking about you and not you talking about yourself, which is always a plus. 
Um, so I think that certainly as soon as we have, you know, additional staffers and bandwidth, um, that's something that I want to absolutely push for. Um, I think that would be kind of uh, cutting edge in, in the public radio world as it hasn't been something that I've seen implemented across the board. Yeah, I think similar to what Kat said is what we have done is reached out to kind of local champions or just, mm -hmm. um, you know, people who we can recognize celebrities or influencers that follow us or have engaged with us in the past and providing them with those resources, that swag or that copy so that they can broadcast it out to their networks and kind of extend our reach um, yeah. uh, during, during important fundraisers. Uh, I think we, we did a big push for Giving Tuesday now. Um, and during California Public Radio Day, you know, looking for those, you know, you know, core California people who can really champion the state, but also champion public radio for us and, and be that extra voice to spread our message. Yeah, you know, and it just kind of came to mind where uh, Seth Godin, I'm sure you all are probably familiar with Seth Godin, but for those who may not, they ha he has what uh, he calls uh, flipping the funnel um, and the notion where you're turning your, your champions into your uh, activists. Um, and then, Amy, I think a question for you in thinking about that, hashtag activism. I love that term. I think I, I, I think Giving Tuesday had started it, even though hashtags is bigger than a hashtag these days. But how are you working with your clients, Amy, and kind of what are the tactical pieces to really ensure, you know, success? Um, you know, what are you encouraging your, your clients to work with uh, platforms, non-platforms, communications you certainly double, you honed in on? But any other tools or tactical items that have really been impactful for you? I, th I think, um, and, and I, I think that everyone here um, would agree with this, that one of the most important things is to go surround sound, to make sure that you're reaching all platforms in a synchronized message. So what does that mean really? And, and, and this, I, I'm finding my nonprofit clients are trying and really, like, I, I, it's the pandemic, everyone started paying attention to social media and it's fabulous. And so as, as people are discovering social media and what works for them and looking at hashtags, you know, fi finding what conversations are already out there, you can, you can look at this unique, unique, you know, you can look at your giving day uniquely, but really, again, if you're looking at it just as cohesively as you would any other campaign, making sure that you have the components in place and that you're prepared for it, I, I think are, are just the standard, right? So like I said earlier, making sure that your graphics, um, that they synchronize across your digital uh, di social media platforms. So if you're using a graphic or a video or a picture of someone, maybe the email that you're sending out comes from that same person or the imagery is the same. But we, we know that people might not act the first time they see an email or the first time that they see a social media post. But when you see things repetitively, it reminds that person, oh gosh, I never did that. Um, the other thing, and I love this conversation where we're talking about ambassadors, quote unquote. Um, yeah. But you know, one one of the things I think that is is an opportunity for everyone is to look at our partners, our existing corporate partners, um, and talking to them about what their plans are for for their giving days or giving Tuesday. Does it can it include you? Can you include them and highlight what can mm -hmm. you do for your partners that also highlight them? You know, not you know. Yes, they can be a sponsor for a gala, but is there something special that they're doing? Do, do, are, is your organization highlighting your board members? Are you highlighting some of your volunteers? And if so, it, it's a great opportunity to reach out to companies that you have that volunteer pool from and say, who do you want us to highlight? What stories do you want us to share? And by doing that, by talking to the people that support you, your volunteers, your donors, your board, um, your staff, and that, that's gonna form what your goal is for the day. And then you'll have that buy-in and all of that material that you're gaining and all of those allies just help spread the word even further. Um, and again, I, I, I can't say it enough, just use the tools that are out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel um, and, and just really think, think strongly about your follow-up because we, we, we've seen that those numbers are, are so important. You know, just with that, Amy, and I'm, I'm sure Kat, you probably have some thoughts here too, as far as corporate, Sponsorship. I'm certainly um, big in the public media world, but thinking through um, uh, employee engagement, you know, those employees of those corporations, you know, floors competing against floors. Um, so certainly that gamification and that opportunity to really engage that sponsor into the giving day, being a part of it. 
That's Kat, a have, brilliant idea. Have you seen, um, are there some successful models or examples you've seen on that side of corporate involvement or corporate teams involvement? Yeah, it varies wildly, right? I mean, it depends a lot on your nonprofit's capacity. I've seen organizations host a, a company or a partner for a volunteer day at the organization. Paris Casino in Los Angeles, I think, does this. They close down on Giving Tuesday completely, and they send all their employees out to a dozen different nonprofits in their local mm -hmm. area. They also give that nonprofit a stipend because, as you know, it's a lot of work to put together these volunteer activities. But like Amy pointed out, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. These nonprofits are now loaned Harris Casino's uh, megaphone, they're putting together a really polished video, they are tagging these organizations on their social media pages all day long. Uh, another thing I've seen companies do is loan their megaphone to nonprofits for a day. So mm. can you call your corporate sponsors and say, can we take over your Instagram stories on Giving Tuesday to share all these ways that you can get involved with our organization? Um, that's that. my number one strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think content, creating content, um, it's not easy. <laughs> and certainly having that opportunity to pull in a voice from the, on the ground. Yep. Danny and um, yeah, Amy, go for it. I, I was just going to throw in that one, one other thing I think is strategic for Giving Tuesday that, that is important. And you mentioned it earlier about the thermometer but is, it, it is keeping um, your donors and your, your supporters up to date on, on the giving day of goals and milestones that you have for the day. If you have you know, a donation, uh, someone doubling the donation, just that you're communicating regularly. Um, I love the idea of a thermometer or a lot of our clients do something similar in their emails the day before, throughout the day, a follow-up at the end of the day, a follow-up the, the week after. But my point being that it's important to let people know not just that you raised $5,000 and met your goal, but again, keeping in mind that a great percentage of those donors are new to your organization. What is that $5,000 mean, right? So not, you know, going beyond, um, you know, whether or not, you know, if it's an organization that we're feeding 5,000 families, but as much as, as you can uh, be detailed and, and really um, embracing them, I think, uh, Chaz, you said it earlier, people don't give to, an organization, they give to a cause. And so if they're new to your organization, give them that real reason to continue supporting you because that cause meant something enough for them to give you the donation in the first place. So let's hold on to those people. Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. I've got a question for Deanna and Danny. I'm gonna play the bit of an antagonist here and saying like, uh, you know, I love California giving days, um, that, but that's a digital thing, that's just digital. You know, and that's a younger audience. You know, we can we we can just do you know a couple of emails maybe on the day of. What's the response? Because I'm sure there's a few folks who think of it as only a digital thing for the you know younger audience today. I mean, how have you all kind of responded to that? How have you all incorporated these other channels? Yeah, well, we definitely see the stations that make it a full fudge drive day with on-air pitching uh, bring in a lot more than those who just send out a couple of uh, tweets and an email. Um, you know, the impact is great because you're building the excitement all day. Uh, on-air is a fantastic channel for it. Um, but we, we also know that not every station has the ability to interrupt programming um, without, you know, outside of the scheduled drive. Some are, you know, beholden to a college and they're fundraising is very specific. So, you know, trying not to, you know, push them too hard, but also just kind of sharing the positives that, hey, you know, you know, of the overall amount, like the five or so stations that had full on pledge drives that day, you know, brought in a lot more money is kind of a strong talking point. Yeah, yeah. Proofs in the pudding. Proofs in the pudding. Um, and maybe this is a question for all of you. And I think as we're kind of closely wrapping up, um, how far in advance do you actually plan for your giving day? You know, and when, you know, when would you advise the time in advance? And then two, when do you launch your giving day? Amy, it looks like you're, uh, you're muted, but it looks I, like I was going to throw that one to Kat. I was going to throw that one to Kat. <laughs> I would say though, you should be doing it already. 
That, yeah. that would be my response. You're, you're late. You're, you're <laughs> late for giving Tuesday if you're starting. To. But not too late. You could still do it. There's still, still time. There's still time. Yes. There's still time. Yeah. Every, every year now for giving Tuesday or for California public radio day, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to start earlier this year. And then I look back and I'm, I'm basically following the same schedule I did last year. And it's tough. You know, you, you do have other fundraising days that you have, you know, tent pulled throughout the year. So for us, um, you know, our, our giving days in August, um, we have a June, uh, fiscal year end fundraising push. So we just wrap that up. But even before then, we had started planning California Public Radio Day. But really, once that June thing ended, we were, you know, I was, we're ordering merch, we're, we're sending out um, on-air messaging, like we're, we're really kicking into high gear. Um, so it's about a, a month and a half before the day of really when we're like getting that final push of assets together. Um, but, but we start, you know, um, I think our first outreach to stations each year is in early April or late March. Um, just to get the get the call out to people saying, hey, yep, this is happening again. Hope we'll hope you can join us. We'll have everything ready for you in, in the upcoming months. So stay tuned. That's kind of our, our plan for our day. Yeah, and yeah just looking back at the calendar, uh, April 18th is when I sent out the initial email inviting stations to participate with the date. But we are already, you know, meeting with a smaller group and planning the specific date for it. Is it, it we try to keep it on the third or the fourth uh thursday of the month of august um and you know and so yeah, that's quite a few months in advance for stations yeah. to get a fundraising day on their calendar absolutely and you were all working with organizations i mean and locally owned and operated organizations that makes sense um so you're you're actually trying to round up sort of the leaders within um cat where where does an organization let's say i'm new to an organization i'm, I'm new at an organization they've never done a real proper quote unquote proper um, giving Tuesday, where do I start? Okay, here's what you start. Uh, first, you think about what it is that your goal is going to be for your campaign. We talked about this already, but you do this in like uh, now, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, start thinking about who it is in your network that you can mobilize to help you achieve that goal, and then start plotting out your touch points over the fall. Uh, what reminders can you give folks that the day is coming, what actions they can take to get involved consistently? Because as Amy mentioned, folks need to hear things more than one time. Uh, they, it, the old uh, marketing rule was that you needed to hear something seven times or something like this. These days, it's like 21 times before right. something finally hits, right? So you want to have enough runway so that you can hit multiple touch points with your audience. Uh, to get them prepared so that on the big day, you've built up all this equity, you just have to pay it off. Um, I love it. I get asked this question a lot. Do you guys want to know what the number one digital tactic is for success on a giving Tuesday? Please share. Does anybody know what it is? Anybody in the chat, do you want to guess it? Ooh. Number one digital tactic for success on giving Tuesday or any time bound 24 hour day of giving. It's like a calendar a invite. Roll. It's a calendar invite. Literally a calendar invite. Oh, um, that's, I love it. I don't know about you, but if it's not, if I'm not getting a notification about something on my Apple Watch, I don't know where I need to be. I don't know what day it is, especially now. Uh, you need to have Giving Tuesday or whatever Giving Day on your donor's calendar, on your various stakeholders' calendar. Literally send them a calendar invitation. Um, you'll want to put your link like just like i had a zoom link in today's meeting you want to make sure your mobile friendly giving page link is in that calendar invite along with some clear instructions for what it is you want that person to do you're going to have different calendar invites depending on your different stakeholders so if you have a crew of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers you're going to include the links to the toolkits you're going to you might send them multiple re calendar reminders to post throughout the day you might have a different calendar invite with different instructions for your board members because you're not going to be asking them for five bucks. You're going to ask them for something different. Um, yeah, that's my biggest piece of advice for what you can do to build success on Giving Tuesday. Scheduling, I love it. I love it. Scheduling it, getting on their calendar. Yeah, I just yeah. took notes. That was a great tip. As somebody who even puts on public Giving Days didn't even cross my mind. So that's just an awesome tip. Gonna absolutely do that for sure. Excellent. Yeah. 
Amy, have you seen any other kind of, uh, as we kind of wrap up a little bit, um, any other quick tips and, and, you know, recommend, you know, one, one thing that you'd like to leave with folks as far as they hope they can do as they look to their given day uh, this upcoming year or their next one to be had? I would say don't, don't be afraid. Um, I know Kat mentioned mm. earlier that a lot, there, there, are, there are some people that are intimidated by Giving Tuesday. Um, they say it doesn't work for me or it hasn't worked for me. Um, and I think that that's the real, the, the key part of the, the beginning first step that's the most important is finding your goal because your goal doesn't have to be to raise $10,000. If your goal is to just get five more volunteers or two more board members and stick to your goal and your why, your mission, don't go away from your mission. And so um, I love these tips. I love engaging your stakeholders and finding out once you have their buy-in and you're giving them their voice, letting them share the information. You're, this is this. You have a day in front of you where you don't have to do all the talking. So, put your tools together and truly, you know, at, um, we say, you know, when should we get it on your calendar? It should be. It should be on everybody's calendar at the beginning of the year when you do your content communications calendar, and and you just have to use it for what works for you. Don't be intimidated by it. Make yourself some tools that you're prepared for it and you can give your um, allies and your supporters the tools that they need. And then as we've all said, have fun. And it's okay to try different things too. You just have to find what works for your organization and tap into all these amazing tools, the amazing examples that we have from KPCC, from, from um, Giving Tuesday, and from all, you know, there's so many organizations out there. So don't be intimidated, do what works for you and have fun and follow up. That's my advice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Culture of learning, music to my ears, building that culture of learning. Absolutely. You know, I think that we're going to transition a little bit to all, uh, questions from, from, the, from uh, the attendees. And there's one question that came in as, as far as, and I think this may, well, I'm going to leave it open to see who would want to jump in. And Matt, how to reach new potential donors and go beyond your community. So how to get beyond your, your audience? You know, how do you get beyond your audience? Um, I'll leave it I, open. Yep. Well, I, I, I'll just leave it up to somebody else, you know, somebody else to follow off of this. But I, I think that that's the beauty of, of Giving Days, right? Is that we're reaching people that you normally wouldn't reach by simply using a hashtag Giving Tuesday or uh, today is National Pineapple Day, whatever it is. Um, so you're reaching more people. And the other, you know, important thing to note is that you want to utilize all of your supporters, because if we're just utilizing one, one, one group of our supporters, we're not getting the diversification that we, we really want to get in awareness. So by engaging your board members, by engaging your donors, engaging your volunteers, your staff members, that gives you the ability to reach all different demographics. And, and that's really, you know, the goal. And so the beautiful part about a Giving Tuesday is everybody is looking for it and everybody's involved with it. And the beautiful thing about KPCC NPR Day is that it's growing. And once it starts to grow, more organizations hear about it, about it more partners start to join, and then you are reaching more people than you started to, to begin with. There's real identity too with, with uh, California and NPR, NPR as a whole, so. Yeah. yeah I well, think Local, local giving days. Yes. A local giving days for sure. Uh, the organizers of these giving days are, tend to be spending quite a bit of money on marketing uh, to whatever the landing pages uh, that all of the nonprofits have profiles on. Um, and they, they market in a variety of different ways. I ran a giving day a long time ago. We did a major spend on uh, billboards in Chicago, and we also did billboards outside of the Magnificent Mile. That's the shopping area in Chicago. Uh, directing folks who would not otherwise be inclined to give to come to our landing page and find a nonprofit to connect with. Uh, a lot of nonprofits got new donors that way. But also to Amy's point, you, you're going to use your existing community to get to the new donors. I think that's a thing that folks forget, and I think it's an underutilized tactic, really. What you're going to be doing is deploying your existing community to reach out on your behalf to their community, and that's what widens all of the circles. And I think, I, um, uh, forgive me, I'm not sure who had mentioned this specifically, but ambassadors, um, you know, ambassadors, champions, all those different names we apply to those that are super fans. 
um, of your organization. Um, the other one are board members. Um, certainly, I don't know uh, from experience standpoint, looking at how you engage in your board, you know, that peer to peer potentially. Danny and Deanna, anything um, from your end as far as kind of engagement and those ambassadors um, being so prevalent in sort of the California Giving Day? Yeah, I was, I was going to add that in public radio, um, Giving Days or One Day fundraisers are actually not a great way to get new members that we found. Mm. It, first of all, in public media, it takes years for someone to go from a listener to a, a member. Um, and so, so I think, as Amy mentioned, you know, every year we're growing awareness and we're growing that name recognition behind California Public Radio Day. Just like Giving Tuesday, when, when KPCC first started participating in it, you know, it, it wasn't really a well-known name. It was just starting, but, you know, you know, last year or the year before, you know, have been two of our biggest fundraising, single fundraising days of the year. Um, so with repetition, um, I think that's really where you gain the traction of getting new members, get people remember it year after year, or even if you're just starting this year, having that lead time that we talked about of, you know, put, sending out a pre-drive email, sending out, um, you know, uh, reminders, calendar reminders, you know, in the weeks leading up to it will really get those new members to come in because if, if you're only promoting it a single day, it's only the people who are already aware of you that are going to see it, that are going to be motivated to give on that day. They already have that recognition with your organization, so they're already motivated to give. So if, if you're looking to gain new members and go outside of your existing audience, you really need that runway of, of touch points to get people to give on that day. Yeah. And share and share their gift, because that's another way that you're going to ex get exposure to a new set of folks. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I've seen some organizations that I think um, postcards and certainly incorporating the direct mail piece of it, since we know that's a, such a big piece of our world um, in the U.S. So, yeah, postcards, birthday reminders, all the sort of the tools and tactics. Um, so, look, I think we are just about wrapping up. And I thought I'd kind of end and ask one final question, if I may, if there's no more questions coming in. Um, and I thought that I would leave, sort of wrap up and leave our discussion today with kind of recommendation, what you would like to see uh, as a result of this year, Giving, Giving Tuesday, and maybe not Giving Tuesday, but Giving Day. You know, one thing you wanted to come out of, Danny, that's new and different, you and Deanna, from the California Public Radio Day that, you know, you're excited for. And then Kat and Amy, what you hope to see as far as something that's groundbreaking, new, exciting, what you're really jazzed about, you know, from a tactical standpoint in this year. So can I start with Kat? You got it. I mean, this, right. is, this is the 10th year of Giving Tuesday. So this is a big year for us. Wow. I'm just generally amped up about it, right? I'm really excited to see the creative ideas that nonprofits and people all over the world, remember, it's people who are participating in Giving Tuesday. It's not just nonprofits. This is a mass mobilization that happens every year. So I'm amped about it. Um, if there's one piece of advice that I'd leave, like to leave with you all today, it's to uh, never forget that your role at your organization, whether it's fundraising or community building or what, uh, it's giving people an opportunity to invest in the world that they believe to be possible. And by participating in giving days like this, you are giving people a, an abundant amount of on-ramps to participate into your organization. So keep doing that. Uh, use Giving Tuesday to your advantage for whatever, pur whatever purpose it serves for your organization. We'd love to have you. Really excited to see what you all pull off this year. Love that. And love it. I will, I will add a big plus one to that, to what Kat just said. And it really is a big shift that I've been uh, pushing for to, mm. to change it from, you know, donate to, you know, support this organization to donate to have a say in your community and kind of really uh, invest in your community with something like public radio or whatever nonprofit that you care about. And it's the active is an active um, doing um, and not as much the act of simply just sending money because it, it, I think it's going to give people a lot uh, more excitement and a, a better feeling and they're going to walk away with that they're a part of the process. Phenomenal. Yeah. 
I, I would just jump on board with what um, all of my colleagues have said. I think if there's one thing I'm expecting a little bit more this year, maybe it's a little bit more video. Um, I think that mm. we're, we're getting some some good videos and everyone's sort of getting the hang of it. And I think Giving Tuesday is just a perfect opportunity to share your story. And um, we know that videos do that so well. Um, people, uh, real simple on your phones even these days, but um, I don't want to get anyone nervous. But I, I think <laughs> it's just such a great day of hearing people's stories and seeing <laughs> what works for each individual organization. Um, I really do want to thank, though, both Raisley, KPCC, and uh, Giving Tuesday for really spearheading these amazing days that give other organizations something to look towards, um, to help them, and to really create a, a, be a, better, a better world for us, right? So thank you um, for having me, but um, I really am amongst very fabulous company today. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to have all of you. And I think, um, you know, we're we'll just to wrap up and say, first of all, thank you. We thank you for the insights and the time to really share your experience. <clears throat> and I think what resonated for me, and it's just sort of easy to say, but sometimes hard to do, and that's remaining donor centric in the sense that, you know, doing what excites you is important. Finding what excites other is even critical. Um, and so really, really doubling down on sort of that connection with your audience and it, making it about them. And so that's Giving Days. And with that, I think we're all wrapped up. And I just want to say once again from Raisley, thank you, Amy, Dana, Danny, and Kat. We look forward to partnering with you again in the future and really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And we will hopefully see you again very soon. I'm sure you've been inspired now to take your Giving Days further in Raisley. Now, Giving Day templates are about to release or are ready and waiting, depending on when you're going to be watching this. So make sure you dive on in. Now, be sure to hit me up on comments if you have any questions or even suggestions on other webinars that you would like to see. Now, like and subscribe if you haven't, because it will help you create, fundraise, and grow in Raisley.